So this guy showed up today. I believe it's a 71 Roadrunner. Not exactly sure. All I know is it's got some uh, it's got some issues. It won't stay running from time to time. So could possibly be a fuel issue or electrical issue. I'm gonna get it all figured out. This thing's pretty uh, pretty decent. It's got some skins on it, that's for sure. It's in race mode, so that's cool. But yeah, just got her uh, got her hauled in from the city. Load her, uh, unload it, and uh, get to it right away. I guess. See what's going on with it anyway. Yeah, my bad. No big deal. We're not we're not Mopar guys, but we're we're figuring it out. Yeah, if, if it would have been a 71 and I found that out, there would have been a complete uh, chrome bumper. Basically, as your grill, there would have been no chrome bumper under here. That's just that's one of the little things I found out. Which, like I said, I'm I'm not a Mopar encyclopedia whatsoever. So, <laughs> so as the car was running, uh, like. Pat McBride sent this car down for us to check out. That's where we took the uh, 66 to get the frame straightened out. And uh, he said, you know, guys, a uh, buddy of mine bought this car from an auction. The lot number's still on the windshield, lot 127. So he drove it a little bit last year, uh, pardon me, the year before, I think the tag is, and uh, it stalled on him. So uh, he called Pat and said, hey, can you come help me out? So Pat asked a couple of questions. Pat went and grabbed the new coil, went down to where they were stalled out, put a coil on it, fired back up. And then, you know, the guy made it home, everything was fine. So subsequently after that, it was still not acting right. We got it here, started listening to it. I loaded it up a little bit just to get it on the converter and it started to stutter and fart and, and then it would stall. So basically what we assessed is that uh, it's got the factory, factory distributor still in it. It's got the factory Mopar spark box, ballast resistor. These guys, over time, we've talked to a couple Mopar dudes. They said, you know what, guys, best thing for, for this situation is to take that stuff out, put an MSD system in, and then you're good. So, which we kind of already figured, but we just wanted to verify with our Mopar people because uh, the Mopar guys we know are super Mopar guys. Diehards, big time. Which one of it, it's Pat Fux. He's our buddy in uh, St. Malo who races Mopars, builds Mopars, super Mopar guy. Uh, so that's, we're doing that. We had the front end up uh, earlier today, checked out the brakes. This thing needs rotors and pads. Uh, they they're, they got heat, heat marks on them and a little bit of cracking and stuff like that. I wonder if it has anything to do with this guy. <laughs> Yeah, maybe some of that. A little bit of line lock usage. A little bit of that, a little <laughs> bit of creepage, maybe hauling this thing down from like 120 mile an hour or something like that. Who knows, right? So we're just going through the car, figuring it all out. What does it need? Make it safe. Um, that's that's what we're doing here. Uh, a couple other things we're going to do is uh, it needs a uh, uh, timing cover gasket behind the dampener it's leaking down below can't see it here it's kind of coming down it's got a, it's got the deep sump uh, 
the large capacity oil pan on it. There's, there's not a lot of clearance there. It's, that's not uh, not much, especially if the front end comes up and wants to come down rather quickly. Exactly. So we're going to take and put a new pan gasket in it, uh, front timing cover seal, reseal the timing cover since we're going to have to replace the water pump. Which is right here. Which is right there because it does this. It's, uh, it's got some flex in it. Let's see if you can see there. Might not be able to pick that up, but it does move a little bit. So. You might be able to hear this. Yeah. So those bushings in there are like that close to starting to leak through the through the tattletail port. Mm -hmm. And then we got some seepage in the cooling system. Original rad. The core's got had some stones. There's some pretty Ham nasty dingers there. Hammered through it in a few few different spots around. So we've had it on a pressure test now for uh, a couple oh, hours. It's been a couple hours. It hasn't actually gone down much. It's come down about a pound and pound and change. But because this is a, uh, uh, you yeah. haven't heard it run because we had a problems with the the audio. Our <laughs> audio died on one video where it's running. But I'm pretty sure this has got 500 plus horse in it. So that's going to build some heat. So we're going to put aluminum rad in here, new hoses, new thermostat, water pump, and then uh, also, so it's it's got a it's got a very very good converter in it. Oh yeah. So when it says 32, it's locked at 32. And the cool thing, and we'll we'll do we'll add this to the video here. When you start to creep up on the converter, these dodges, they start to lift the body away from the tires which looks really cool. So we're going to show that to you. Yeah. We also found out that this isn't the original engine out of this car. This is a 440. This car, according to the, the uh, VIN number, came with a 400. So this motor is from 67 to 72, I believe. Uh, so I'm not sure when it was changed, but it's definitely healthy. There's, there has been a lot of things done to this. These uh, bars have been added to the frame keeps the front end from not doing this and when we get to the back we'll show you uh show you some of the stuff that's been done down there yeah but, there's a lot of stiffener stuff that's in the back they've uh they've got a a mount, a, a mount that comes off the back of the transmission mount and it also it turns into a drive shaft loop so i think that's part of uh, a stiffening situation with mopar stuff I'm not quite sure it's got different springs on it. It's got some traction devices in the back, which we'll show you once we get the rear tires off. And there's some uh, stiffeners along the outside of the frame, which is probably a frame connection deal, uh, going from front to back, which is also something neat. So you know you don't have the cage in the car, but you still get all the the stiffening of the of the vehicle. Um, I was going to see here before. Another thing we're going to do is we're going to end up changing the. Uh, the intake manifold gasket, it's got a little bit of oil seepage. You want to have this thing nice and clean because this car is absolutely gorgeous. We're just going to clean all that stuff up uh, when we're doing the rest of it. Uh, what else was it, were we doing here? Oh, if you look at the oh, yeah. fuel filter. This fuel is the wrong color. Yeah. So. Because it's got an electric pump, it makes our life easier to pump out all the fuel, easy to change. So we'll freshen that up. So we got fresh gas going to this guy. It's it's got uh, definitely has a, a roller valve train in it by the sounds of when you're listening to it. So it might be a solid cam. I'm not sure. We're, we're uh, when we get the intake off, we'll we'll be able to figure that out. We'll show you guys that as well. And uh, you said also that when you pulled the dipstick out, you smelled some gasoline. Yeah, in the, uh, it's, it's it does it doesn't it smells fuely. So that's from just starting it and. Not letting it run and or guys pumping it and whatever because it's been in storage for i think a year and a bit or something like that right oh yes this guy right here you know it's a road runner when <laughs> pretty cool <laughs> i love that thing it says right on it voice of road runner so all we need is a oh so close if that was a coyote 
<laughs> I didn't even think about that. I didn't either. I saw the tumbleweeds earlier and maybe, you know. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, we're gonna... We make our own cartoons here. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna pull these uh, big buggers off the back here. Um, and when I say big buggers, I mean... It's definitely, uh, it's got a good footprint, that's for sure. Just some of the stuff that's been done underneath. When we lift it up, we'll show you some more of the, uh, the stuff that's been added to it. So the this, stiffeners and all that. So th this is where we have to jack it up, because we have to lift the body. So we can get this separation to the top of the tire to be able to pull the tire off. So two jacks, lift up the whole car, get the separation here, and then we can get, we can get the balloons out. <laughs> all so right, that's what we're up to next. So those were easy enough to get off, obviously, but look what size these are. 31 by 14.5 by 15. Mickey Thompson street radials. Those things are huge. And I also noticed this thing's got a Ford 9 inch in it. And this big chunk of channel here it's just massive. This thing is just put together so well. That's the uh, that's the uh, the brace across the back, obviously, to uh, stiffen that all up. This is the factory springs. It's got ladder bars on it, and I'm just noticing right here that the shock is that hitting? Is, oh yeah, is rubbing here. So we might have to do some adjusting somewhere to clearance that. I don't know about the other side. No, if that's lots other of side. Room. No, it's got some paint on it too. Lots of room. And uh, whoever did this exhaust, wow, that guy can pat himself on the back and uh, <laughs> just look at that. Like it's just amazing, beautiful work. And then it squeezes past here. You have to beat it in a little bit here, but when this thing runs, there is no exhaust rattle at all. It is absolutely done very, very well. Yeah, this thing's cool. Yeah, that's your your vent. Yeah. Uh, nicely, uh, nicely. Super, super long studs to. Yep, NHRA legal studs for the back. And There's that. I don't know if you can see, but up on the, that orange deal, that's the the drive shaft loop, and it's all tied into the back of the transmission. Once we get her up on the on a, the drive, I don't know if it'll go on the drive on hoist. Maybe. We'll check out the underside and see what it's all like. But and you can see the nice uh, location over on the passenger side for the fuel pump. We got a holly blue on there. And they, they placed it so it is below the bottom of the tank. Yeah, let's see if I can go over there. Nice job with that. A little bit of a I'm going to fix that uh, wiring connection there. It's uh, pulling out of the, uh, the, oh. on the yellow oh, here, one. Yeah, yeah we're going to fix that up. That needs some help, yeah. Yeah. And then those are the issues that uh, Pat from McBride Auto Body asked us to go through and just look over the car uh, to make it safe and just, you know, do, do what we do. We, we have our own magic that we do here and those boys have their magic that they do there. So look at the corner of your fuel tank there. Is that hammered in from the shock? Yes, it is. Well, that's, I think they... They did that? They did that to make okay. that fit. Okay. So, let's see what we Checking out the, uh, the brakes in the back. Everything looks good. These look like new, newer drums. New, new shoes. Everything is dry in here, which is great. That's what we want to see. Uh, E-brakes, we have not tried, but we will, because we got to have that working. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other thing we were... We didn't know about is if the heater core was uh, was leaking or not, and it's not, which is a bonus because anybody that's changed a heater core in anything knows that that is about as much fun as I don't know going to the dentist or something. As a comparison, if you grab the keys, we'll pop the trunk. Yes, I'll do it. Okay, I'll grab it. 
little button for some extra fun right there. Let's see what we got here. Mopar keys going upside down. Battery re relocation. And then uh, just a small, small set of tubs there. Some more wiring we might want to look at. It doesn't look like anything's through. It's just the uh, the sheathing on it is gone. Uh, we'll, put some, we'll put some loom on there. Make her all nice and clean it up. We'll put uh, clamp that down. Or we'll P clamp this in so it looks nice and factory or nice and modified. Look at this beautiful work here with these guys. Look at that. That is awesome how they did all that. Just maintain everything where it needs to be. Just a, just a beautiful job on this car. Absolutely. Might want to help out his weather stripping a little bit. Looks like the glue came loose, so we'll, we'll fix glue, that up. We'll glue that up. Uh, I don't think that's supposed to be twisted like that. Or is it? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe it's a Mopar thing. Well, it works. It works, so maybe. Okay, we'll just leave it alone. <laughs> so that's where we're at for now with this guy. So we're just verifying all these different things, figuring all that stuff out. Uh, we did put a parts order in for a few pieces. We're just finishing going through the rest of the car to find out if we need to get some more stuff to get ready. Uh, we do need an idler arm in the in the front steering, and a couple of uh, a few dust boots on tired ends and. So we'll get those pieces and we'll just take that apart, put the new uh, uh, grease boots on so that they're not torn. That way we'll get the maximum life out of the tire heads that are already in the car. So just simple things like that, you know, don't, we don't have to buy a new part because we have searched out to find that you can just get the, the rubber pieces, which is cool. And yeah, that's kind of where we're at at the moment. So until we get some parts, then this is sort of where we're at for right now. <laughs> gonna have to take it to the, uh, we got a, another storage area that we're gonna, we're gonna take this to. So instead of it sitting in here, we'll go take it to the other place. And uh, when we get all our parts in, we'll bring her back. Well, this thing's in super nice shape. I'm, I'm not a huge Mopar fan, but I don't know. I, I dig this one. I don't know, maybe I'll keep. I hope it shows up. Oh yeah, it, it yeah. The camera probably does not do this thing justice. Like it's dusty, but once it's all uh, detailed, this thing's just gonna look absolutely gorgeous. So we're gonna finish uh, going through the car. We'll put the tires back on. Um, that's where we're at at this point. Like I was saying, uh, once we get the tires back on, we get everything down and put the stuff back. Like take the take the pressure tester off. We'll fire it up. Let you guys hear it. And then we'll load the converter and you can watch that suspension separate. Oh yes. That will be cool. So uh, since we had the car off the ground, I went, uh, we should probably check the depth here and see what we can figure out from without taking the thing out. Uh, I wanted to kind of figure out if it had a spool or a locker or limited slip or something like that. So Jeff was hanging on to one side, I grabbed the other side and he's holding it, I can turn it to a certain point and then it stops. So I'm pretty sure it's got a spool in it, but Jeff's gonna go around the other side, I'm gonna go on this side, and we're gonna show you what we found. Jack stands for safety, by the way. Okay, so just when you lightly rotate the drive shaft you sh should be able to feel the pinion and the ring gear like there should be usually ah man what are the numbers going to be around six thou or something like that so that's not six thou that's more like uh 15 ish and then you rotate the tire so now now everything is hit i'll just do it again there's the so that 
that's the backlash on one tire and the passenger tire isn't moving it so now I'm gonna go on the hit here you saw the yoke move you guys right there now it takes me that much rotation and then back Ooh, this is kind of tight really tight hang on Ooh, this way it's easier from there all the way back to there to make the passenger side tire move so there's four spiders in there two side gears four spider pins obviously a ring and pinion and uh, I don't know how long ago this was built or rebuilt or any of that information but this is this tells me when I got to move this tire that far to get that tire to move and it's probably got a spool in it I'm thinking anyway even if it doesn't that's that's way too much noise that's way too much movement especially in a car that's look look at that so this guy will end up coming out and we're going to find out what's all not clearance properly because chances are it probably winds or something ain't something ain't right so we'll uh We'll pop the plug out the side, maybe stick a magnet in there, pull the magnet out. So when Dave pulled the, uh, the plug out of the rear diff, there was a big release of pressure. So that, uh, that's not normal. I'm thinking the, uh, the breather has got to be plugged or dirty or something. Now he's trying to fish in there with a, a little a magnet down here. Magnet somewhere. in there, just to see if there's anything that comes back with it. But uh, yeah, I don't know if he's gonna be able to do it with that little magnet we got. Just suspicious, curiosity. And this diff is definitely, uh, definitely got fluid in it. A little too much by the... Yeah, since we're not level, we're up. Oh, that's, yeah, well that's why. some stuff a little bit of crud on there so that means uh, yeah for sure it's coming out okay well we're just gonna add that to the list <laughs> which is good I mean this is this is why you know guy gets something new he doesn't know where it really comes from and you know it's an auction it has so, no backstory on it no so. backstory I mean she meant I don't you know Typically the owner of the vehicle who's selling it isn't there. It's all done with auctioneers or or whatever. And uh, you're, you're, you're basically either you're buying it off the internet, which I think he might have. I don't think, I think it was probably a closed auction. I'm not, I'm not quite sure, but I'm going to assume. But uh, regardless, uh, yeah, we got a, we got some chunks out of there, man. Uh, so, yes. so we know we got to go in there and make this right because, uh, you know, 33,000 plus stall, uh, ultimate traction, weight shift, a lot of motor, a lot of torque. Uh, we're just, if you keep slamming this thing around like that, it's just going to break. And when you break it, then like you wreck everything. So no, I... let's, it's super easy with a nine inch, just drive shaft out, uh, pull the axles out pumpkin done and then we're then we're in, into it and we can see everything that's going on uh you won't probably see that on this video because we're gonna do a two series on this this is just uh you know hey 74 roadrunner welcome to the shop meet the coyote yeah. and then uh when when all the parts come in then we'll we'll do another one with us putting the parts in that but we're still going to show you the separation of the body right from the tire because that's just cool so uh yeah we're gonna get out of here from underneath the car and uh we'll get set up for that okay we're gonna back her out and uh do that thing with the uh suspension deal get you go see that it's pretty cool
Mimi 